Hello and welcome to your learners. So far we have studied how to design lesson plan for composition, grammar and poetry. Today we are going to study how to design lesson plan for prose. It is here on your screen. So friends here you can see a lesson plan of prose on your screen. It begins with the same table that we have already discussed in previous three lesson plans. The entries to be filled here are date, class, section, period, time, subject and topic. Again the date on which you will be teaching this lesson plan. The class that is important to mention here. I have prepared a lesson plan for class 7th. Then section of that class, period in which you are teaching the uh, lesson plan. Time, how much time the period will take. And then subject, I have a specified prose in bracket over here that is English prose and today I'm going to teach a story I am glad I was brave this is about a small girl Lucy who lives in village but is very brave now the next is name of the school this is the name you will be signed in to work then we will start with general objectives here uh, there is difference in objectives that we have discussed in composition grammar and poetry. Let's read them one by one. To enable students to speak and write English. To enable students to read English passage loudly with correct pronunciation. To prepare them for silent reading. To develop the comprehension ability and creative thinking. To develop their interest in reading and writing English. So these are long term aims that we decide for a particular class. But let's Come and discuss specific objectives which are framed for a particular class. So initially when you enter the class, you must have these objectives in your lesson plans, in your mind, in your heart that you are going to accomplish all these objectives in a single period. We'll start with knowledge. The students will be able to recall and recognize the story. Understanding. The students will understand the meaning of different words or difficult words used in the text. In application part, the students will try to apply the moral of the story in their daily life. That is why stories are given in prose. Every story has a moral. That should be conveyed to the students as well. Interest. The students will take interest in the story. I am glad I was praying. Now to the next page, material aids used. These are the same aids that we have used. Maybe you are using some new ones. You can mention it over here. Picture, chart, rollerboard, chalk, duster, pointer, etc. Previous knowledge because I am teaching about a girl who lives in village. So I generally start with some questions that are, you know, that are connected with village life. Okay. So the students can speak, write and read simple English. They also know about the rural life. This is what is expected from children. Now introduction, as I told you that they know about village life and I have started my lesson plan. I have started questioning from the same knowledge that they know. In which country do you live? And they very easily answer, we live in India. Yes, very energetic. Where does the majority of population reside in India? So some of they must be knowing that the majority of population in India resides in villages. Where do you find kacha house? Now they very well know that kacha houses are always in village. So they will answer, sir or ma'am, the villages have kacha houses. We do have kacha houses in our villages. What do you know about the rural life? Now students generally come from rural life. They know uh, what is rural life. You will receive various answers from students. So I have written various answer or problematic question. Then you announce your aim. Today we shall study an interesting chapter. I am glad I was brave. Well, now is your presentation. We start with first teaching point that is first model reading. And here as you can see there is a color part over here. This is again a piece of paper in which you are going to write the lines of the paragraph you are teaching right there. So I have written one morning dash 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 in the little shaky voice. Okay, 
Now let's come to another column that is expected behavioral outcomes. Here students will pay attention to the passage read. So what teacher is going to do? He is going to read the passage in clear voice. That is there should be uh, articulation and intonation in his voice. The pronunciation should be clear. Well, the pupil teacher will read the passage with proper stress, pronunciation and intonation. This is what is expected from pupil teacher. And what students are doing here? The students will open their books and listen attentively. In poetry, we have students close their books. But here we have students open their books. Because poetry is about recitation. Poetry is about rhythm, but prose is not about rhythm or rhyme. Well, what methods or aids you are using here is oral teaching. So the column of evaluation is blank over here because you haven't started teaching yet. Now the pronunciation drill. Okay. In pronunciation drill, what students are expected to do? The student the students will be able to learn pronunciation of the difficult words. That means pupil teacher is going to conduct pronunciation drill over here. And you can see in the next column, I have written few words over here like cottage, laid eggs, wrinkled, bounced. So these are difficult words that you have identified within the text, within this paragraph, which you can, uh, which you have pasted in first model reading in first uh, first teaching point of your presentation well these words are difficult to pronounce that is why you have identified these words and you have written it in your lesson plan so what you're going to do is you are going to take a chalk and write these words one by one on the blackboard so you will write cottage first but you're not going to pronounce this word here what pupil teacher is going to do is pupil teacher is going to ask students to stand and speak the word written on the board aloud. But the problem is that a student have never heard this word before. So what he is going to do? You have to provoke a student to speak the word by adding alphabets. So what a student is going to do here is C O T C O T A A G E H Cottage. And then at the point you have to say, yes, this is how this word is pronounced. Okay. So when you can try with other words too. But you have to provoke students to speak the words because it's all about pronunciation. You don't have to pronounce it directly, but you have to make students pronounce it. On some occasions, students will fail to pronounce this word, but still you have to try four or five times. And uh, if anybody is able to speak, then it's okay. If it's not, then you will finally, you will speak the word. But before that, you have to provoke students to speak. Okay, you can do it with other words like laid eggs, wrinkled, bounce, etc. Now let's come to the third teaching point. That is loud reading. So what students are expected to do here? Students will be able to read the passage with correct pronunciation and express expression. Well, the uh, the pupil teacher will ask some students to read the passage aloud and check their pronunciation mistakes. Here students are allowed to speak loudly, taking the books in their hands and you know speaking every word clearly and loudly. So you can do it with four or five students. The students will read the passage one by one. Here are the uh, methods or aids you are using is textbook or oral reading. Now let's come to another teaching point that is the exposition of new words. Here what students are expected to do is students will be able to enrich their vocabulary and tell the meaning of the difficult words. Now again students will be able to tell the meaning of difficult words. You would be remembering in previous lesson plan we have already discussed exposition of new words. Here again we are going to do the same thing. The pupil teacher will write difficult word on the blackboard and derive their meaning from the students. Well, the students will try to answer the meaning of the words. They will try. But how? Now you can see on the third page. In this part, I've written the words and meaning together. But in between, you can see word device here. So what? how does it work? 
I'm going to tell you again. You can see a word cottage here. And in bracket, I have written flashcard. And in extreme uh, right hand side, you can see a flashcard, a green colored part over here. This is actually a flashcard. In first, I've written flashcard. And you can, so, uh, you can see a small picture of a house, which is uh, very near to the pond. You can see the trees over there. Uh, this is a small house. Okay. Well, uh, now you have to show the students a picture of this house. The students will recognize the picture and they will answer this is house. But what type of house? A small house. Okay. So you can question the students and derive the meaning in this way. So the next word is rural. I have used a device that is antonym that is opposite to rural. And I said opposite to this word is city. You don't have to tell the meaning of this word. So what is that? Then they, they will recognize and they will recall. Oh, opposite to city is a village. So immediately they will answer, sir, it is village. Exactly, you have to say. The opposite of a city is rural. And rural means village. Now the third word is wrinkled. Use in sentence. Grandfather has wrinkled screen. This is how you have to do. You have to act somewhere. They have wrinkles in their skin. So what is that? The students will answer, yes, sir. That is some kind of you know distortion in the skin. Oh, exactly. That is old aged skin. This is how you will derive answers. And then the last word is brave. And the synonym to this word is courageous. Or even you can use, uh, you know, you can use this word in sentence and you can say that soldier is brave. What is that? So immediately they will answer. It is all about boldness, awareness to do the things. And it's all about courage. So this is how you will derive the meaning of words from, uh, from students. Well, uh, in the last uh, column, uh, evaluation part, I've written make sentences of the words rural, brave, and so on and so forth. You can uh, give them some assignment at right, right then in your class. Uh, you can tell them to frame sentences using these difficult words and they will do that. Now, the fifth point is silent reading. And here what students are expected to do, the student will be able to read the passage without murmuring so they don't have to move their lips they have to speak silently in their minds even they don't have to move their lips the pupil teacher will ask the students to read the passage silently without moving their lips this is silent reading so silent reading is you know you're just murmuring you're remembering you're calling and you know you're going word by word silently in your mind what students will do the students will read the text silently okay and the method or aid you're using is silent reading okay well uh, the last uh, teaching point in this lesson plan is comprehensive question the students will be able to answer the questions the pupil teacher will ask some questions related to the passage here it is all about evaluation so the students will uh, answer the questions this is what is expected uh, this is a student's activity and the method you're using here is question answer method. Whom did the mother ask to go to Lucy's cottage? So this is a small question that you frame on the basis of the part that you have just read and explained. So uh, remember, uh, this should not extend... Um, this should not extend beyond one passage. You have to remember that as short as you make the passages, it becomes very clear for them. You can break a big lesson into several passages. And for each passage, you can frame a lesson plan. Well, from that particular passage, you're going to ask few questions and that you have to write in comprehensive questions. This is about evaluation. I have written this question in evaluation part. Well, now the last part is blackboard summary. This is uh, this all we have done in previous classes also. You have to cut a black chart paper and you have to fill the entries at the top similar to the blackboard you're using in your classroom, real classroom. And as you can see in this blackboard, in this virtual blackboard, there are words written in one hand and meanings written in other hand. So there is nothing else on the board. You don't have to use board for other purposes. So please remember it. Now classroom supervision, the pupil teacher will supervise the class by making a round in class 
and he will ensure that whether students are writing or not. Now, finally, students will assign some homework, fill in the blanks, long question, etc. You can give according to your own. And at last, you have to mention the reference book also. So here we have finished the lesson plan for prose. Thank you so much. So friends, this is how we design lesson plan in prose. You can also send your own lesson plans using similar strategy. Thank you so much for watching this video.